Hi. I'm Tanya Tucker. Okay. This is my mom and her sister. She was born near Pond Inlet and was born and raised on the land fully until the government relocated our family to Resolute Bay. So she didn't move into a house till she was about 12 years old. And now she has her Bachelor of Education from McGill University. That's a lot of change in one generation. And I'm truly hoping that in the light of post-colonial fallout that we can continue in, on that trajectory, but in a positive way. This is uh, my daughter Naya and I. I think it was minus 55 that day. So uh, you Winnipeggers can quit complaining about the cold now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is a kamotik. Uh, traditionally, it was could be made with uh, many different things, but usually whale bones and sometimes even frozen fish for the runners. Uh, it was our form of transportation with the dog teams. Uh, we were forced of the nomadic lifestyle just a couple generations ago. So it's very interesting to see what happens in a sociological sense when you're forced into a petri dish. You think of uh, animals that travel, and uh, we, were, we were forced into small places, so that had its fallouts. <clears throat> this is my parents' house. You can see... Um, the caribou horns there. It was really beautiful being able to be born and raised up in Nunavut and um, hunting. And if we talk about housing crisis and petri dishes, <laughs> what's happening now with the sociological issues is that uh, when you put too many people that have been hurt in one environment, too many of any creature in one environment, there's inevitably negative ramifications. But... <clears throat> Luckily, we have the land, and luckily, we have our food. How many people realize that the bologna sandwich you ate today used to walk around? How many people have killed something here? Put your hand up. Good. Uh, I think if you're going to be a responsible uh, meat eater, you should know what it's like to take a life, because otherwise, it's pretty disrespectful. So uh, here's lunch. Pretty yummy. This picture, <laughs> which, see, I'm very naive. <laughs> because when I look at that picture, I see, and every Inuit I've, uh, Inuit person I've showed that picture to thinks it's pretty cute. And that's because when you grow up respecting the meat that you eat, it's not disgusting to touch it. There are a lot of people that will like happily put a hamburger in their mouth like like this, like, you know, it's allowed to touch the inside of their mouth. But if you see a dead animal on the ground and you go touch it and they go, ew, no. And I, I just think that's absolute insanity. So we were at an elders camp and uh, one of the nephews came up and we were so happy to have that seal. And one of the elders jokingly said, oh, you should let your baby a mamak from it because the seal has really thick, fatty milk. So the seal was still warm, and I put baby next to it, and uh, we all thought it was pretty sweet. Think, think about the turkey dinner, the Thanksgiving dinner, all posing around the turkey. Think about that. There's really no difference. That's our cow. You know, that's our, that's our turkey. There's no difference. It's just insane the amount of propaganda that have, has come from those seals, they're not endangered. And you know what? When it comes to people, original people of this country, attempting to survive in a newly formed for us economic society, there are very few choices. Because if you look at resource development, if you look at the last couple hundred years, it really hasn't worked out for indigenous people. It's that 1% lining their pockets. So right now, I don't trust resource development. I really don't, in the light of climate change. <clears throat> so 
What was the perfect way? What is the perfect way for Inuit to survive and implement social programming that is so desperately needed? Obviously, our own natural resource, which is seals, which are seals. There's so many of them. In the spring, it looks like, you know, God just, it's like a pepper shaker, shook a pepper shaker on the ice. They're everywhere. Like, you really, there's so many. And it's just ridiculous that we can't reap the benefit of that. It's totally unfair. I think slaughterhouses are way more cruel. So this might seem gross to you, but that's one of the most beautiful things I can see. It's so delicious and so beautiful and so giving. And it's beautiful to give and take a life and a spirit with respect. This is some of the fallout that came from me posting that picture. I had three months of uh, death threats. Um, someone photoshopped my baby being killed. If I ever see that fucker, I would love to be in the same room with that guy. You know, it's like, you're very brave behind your computer, aren't you? There was a petition to have my child taken away from me. That's what's happened. You know, so much has been done in the last little while. There's been a lot of shock, but it's still being done. Look at that. Ridiculous. This is a painting I did. This is actually going to be a kind of funny to you guys. I ex I'll explain it. It's, um, it's about breast implants. <laughs> because uh, I was thinking about uh, body modification and how female the female form, and right now how in society we're kind of forced in this ridiculous box that we're supposed to live in. So I did a drawing of, or a painting of a walrus, and I made the tusks like three times longer than they normally are so that they're nice and sexy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's how I feel when I think about how, how um, you know, my mom and my aunts and, you know, all the women and men I know, how they have to be hurting so much. Residential school wasn't that long ago. I went, the last one closed down in 1996. When I went, it wasn't that bad. It was a government-run residential school. But a lot of people don't understand that we're afraid that um, it's this uh, equation really terrible equation that happened. We had our own beautiful, amazing, and very stringent uh, system in place that punished people when they did crimes. So what happened is uh, during contact, anyone who was executing our own laws was being put away in conjunction with residential schools where people were not being not uh, taken away and all our way of learning and all our way of being and was being replaced by abuse. So we have nobody to stand up for ourselves. And a lot of people don't understand that their judicial system is not functioning properly because our honor system is totally different. Like, you're supposed to self-regulate. In your heart, know you're a good person, so you do the good things and try to be good. So being cross-examined by people that have abused you doesn't work out. That's part of the reason there's a lot of sociological issues. Well, number one, unfortunately, we need, um, we need to bolster our economy to make sure that uh, we, c we can put a proper curriculum in place, a curriculum that essentially includes like uh, group therapy sessions and teaching small children who's allowed to touch them and where and why. Who's allowed to hurt them or not? What is hurt? You know, these small things that got taken away from residential schools. People don't know what's okay. And we have to do something right now. She's getting rid of uh, Christianity. I like that. This one is... Um, I like this one because we are equal to animals and there are a lot of legends about shape-shifting. 
And I like the idea of us being equal, and I feel really that's where humanity kind of made the biggest misstep, is when God gave us this land to be ours, like we're above everything, but really we're not. Why do you think climate change is happening? We're taking and we're not giving. This is a list of uh, 1,800 missing and murdered indigenous women since 1980. Um, I don't know what kind of Canada you want to live in, but I need to live in one that's safe. And this is fucking scary, and it's not fair. And we need to do something about it right now. All the Jane Doe's. You know, all the people whose lives are lost. So this is why I do what I do. Because I thought, whenever you start discussing Native rights, you know what happens? People roll their eyes. You go, oh, when are they going to get over that? You know what? It's not up to us to get over. It's about us working together. It's about education, about people understanding the true history of Canada. And I thought, how am I going to build that bridge? How am I going to talk to you? How, how am I going to make you know what it feels like to have your family commit suicide? Know what it feels like to be abused, sexually abused? Know what it feels like to be this hurt and everyone around you? How am I going to do that? I thought, I'll take the words away. I'll do it with sound. And then once you feel it, I'll explain what it is. Traditional Inuit throat singing is done face-to-face. -face. <clears throat> Truly traditionally pre-Christian, it was mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, but that was way too cool. <laughs> no one wants to have that much fun, right? This is me and my lovely cousin, Selena. I love her so much. Um, this is another kind of embellished, but this is a mainland caribou. It's not a Nunavut caribou. I like to paint animals because we are animals and we're so ridiculous that we think otherwise. I don't know how many people in the room have a strange sense of dissatisfaction and numbness as you go through your day of questioning, but you know what? The closer you are to the land, the more sure you get to feel of yourself. And the more you give to people and the more effort you take to being a good person, the more you feel good about yourself. So. Again, go to those marches, write some letters, spread the word, like, you know, kick a racist in the balls, whatever you got to do. <laughs> Thank you.